Hello everybody, this is Rick with Transformation Michigan, another section of the Truth Serum series. I'm going to be talking about today something that's really uh, stirring me up inside. Harbinger and the Harvest, a call to breastplate prayer. Uh, recently I read a book uh, called The Harbinger by Jonathan Kahn. It really impacted me. You know, after the call 11-11-11 at Ford Field, where we had that 24-hour prayer event, I knew that part of the sustainment plan was to go out and not only instruct the people to pray, and because of Bishop Larry Jackson, I give him a lot of credit for this aspect when I talk about breastplate prayer on this little uh, YouTube clip. But anyway, uh, you go to his website, you're going to hear a whole lot more than what you're going to hear from me on it. It's breastplateprayer.org. But anyway, the Lord was stirring me back in December to go back, and I would say even into January and February, go back and begin to preach the gospel on university campuses. The Lord was showing me that the, the stage is being shed, uh, set and people are really being stirred up. And so again, I got my whole, uh, hands on a hold of this book, The Harbinger by Jonathan Kahn. I read it and I was just so incredibly amazed how God's plan is working in the fullness of times, in the times and seasons we're in. Harbingers are like a warning, a warning to the people. And I remember on 911 exactly, it was an impact moment in my life where I knew exactly where I was at. And I was preaching the gospel at Central Michigan University Day, a beautiful sunny day. But you know, it was a warning sign that was much bigger than I ever thought, where God had lifted his hand off America. And from that time on, we have been having numerous things take place, just like birth pangs, trying to awaken and quicken the people. And so God is really setting us up for something. So I know the lost are being stirred inside. And so it was no uh, uh, coincidence to me how we did the call, stirring up the prayer movement in our state, raising up 10,000 intercessors. But now we're trying to impact our whole state in breastplate prayer. So, you know, I would like to talk a little bit about this. You know, back in the Old Testament, Exodus, you know, uh, the people of Israel were set free. You know, they came out of bondage of, out of Egypt. And, you know, as they crossed, you know, the Red Sea and they went into the wilderness, you know, God's intent was to make all of the nation of Israel priests, priests unto God, where they could all go before God, before him personally and for behalf of other people who weren't saved. But you know what happened? You know, uh, eventually... They got scared, and I'm not saying we wouldn't be any different. And they appointed Moses to do that very thing. If you remember correctly, Moses came down from the mount. You know, his face shone, and there was thunderings and lightnings. And, you know, I could see where it make my knees rattle a little bit also. But, you know, what happened there was a distinct change in the people's hearts and minds. Instead now, they said, Moses, you go for us in behalf of us. And they looked to Moses as being the spokesman. But what took place, this was not really God's plan originally. And so what ended up in a Levitical priesthood was set up. A priesthood which could go in behalf of the people. And because individuals didn't want to do it, so God made a Levitical tribe. We know Aaron was a, was a, was a, was a priest in the Levitical tribe. And so God appointed these people so they could stand in behalf of the people. Now all these priests wore this breastplate. They had a breastplate with 12 different stones, each representative of a various tribe. And so we have to realize, yes, this is Old Testament. But you know, now we come into the New Testament. Jesus Christ, who came, died, and rose again to take away the sins of the world. What took place here was that he now sits at the right hand of the Father because of what he did on the cross and makes intercession for us. And the Bible is very clear. He has made us kings and priests. A king is one who has authority. And the scripture is very clear in Revelation 1, 5 and 6, that God has made us priests and kings. And you know, we have to really grasp this. We have a function. Now, a king has authority. We have dominion where we walk through the declarations, the words that we speak. But he's also made us priests where we can fill the bowls of heaven with our prayers. And because of the harbingers that's been given us, warnings, mankind is being set up. If we would take these people individually to the cross and stand in a gap for them on a daily basis, God is going to bring these people home, and they're going to be saved, and they'll be part of this great harvest, 
and you and I can be caretakers and co-laborers in it. But it says in Peter that God has made us a priest, okay, and also a spiritual house. Now, we are a priest. We're to minister and bring up our prayers unto God as a holy incense. It talks about in Revelation 5 how the prayers of the saints go up, fill the bowl in heaven. And when that bowl spills over, things begin to happen on earth and divine intervention occurs. Now, I want to get back to this harbinger thing and try to connect it with the breastplate prayer. I believe God is allowing us an opportunity in this season of time. If we would incorporate this, what God has given Bishop Larry Jackson, if we can implement in our state on a full-blown, I mean full scale, we will see a massive uh, coming in of souls into the great harvest. So this is our responsibility as priests and kings, to pray for those who are lost. The Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. And, you know, we have a definite purpose on what we're supposed to be doing as we walk this earth, as we're all going to stand before God and give an account for ourselves. Now, when I was reading this book, The Harbinger, by uh, Jonathan Kahn, I was getting stirred inside. It was a confirmation to me. As a number of weeks ago, I began to go back and preach the gospel on university campus. We had a wonderful weather, as some of you know, and in March here in Michigan. And I began to go out, and I had noticed there's an intensity of interest in these students' minds, the unsaved. They do want to know the truth, and we have the responsibility to give them that hope and encourage them that they can be saved and be adopted, you know, uh, as sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. But what precedes them coming in, what's going to soften their hearts, is the prayers of the saints in this breastplate prayer. And so this is what I'm challenging the church to do. The harbingers are being given to our nation as a warning. God has lifted his hand. And when I found out that the miracle of 911, the building that was left standing after the trade towers fell, was St. Paul's Cathedral. And back in 1789 in April, this is the very place where George Washington dedicated our country to God. You see, I mean, I, I knew some of these facts in the past, but I forgot them, and the harbinger brought it back to light. I go, oh my God, you're setting the stage right now. You're setting the stage for these warnings to stir up the people like never before. And you're giving us an opportunity. If you would just pray for the lost, there's going to be a tipping point and souls are going to come into the kingdom. But when George Washington prayed to St. Paul's Cathedral, you have to realize the landscape was much different than when you see in New York and Wall Street right now and where ground zero is. And those train towers stood in the actual courtyard of St. Paul's Cathedral. And in that courtyard, people gathered. And in that church, they gathered when George Washington dedicated this nation. I'll tell you something. The Harbinger, you must read this publication by Jonathan Kahn. It will just quicken you and excite you. It will also, I would say for some, it's going to scare some people. Because we can see now judgments are coming upon the land, but God has never wanted to turn his back on us. We can cry out for mercy because he prefers mercy over judgment. How much more are we to cry out mercy for the people on our spiritual breastplate? Now, what is a spiritual breastplate? I have one right here. I mean, I have my own. I have written in my Bible. I carry it with me. But I have made up a three by six banner right here, a three by six foot banner. You can hang on a wall. And I'm asking ministries and churches. We have the template on breastplateprayer.org. I went ahead and did this. And people who I am working with and ministering to in our house of prayer, we are all adding names onto this breastplate, this banner that we can hide. I mean, not hide, but we can hang on the wall. And I'm encouraging everybody to get involved in this movement. Because when we come together corporately and pray for people, it's an awesome thing. When we have names literally written on this breastplate. Now, what is this breastplate again? Remember, the Old Testament priest had a breastplate, right? Now, the New Testament priest had a spiritual breastplate, a spiritual breastplate. Now, here's what I want to say. I challenge all of you, and some of you have done this. And I know there's churches in our state of Michigan who are doing it right now because they caught the vision. And because of the harbinger, I know the warnings from God where his hand is lifted. And now we saw the stock market fall back in September of 2008. And I mean, there's signs given to us right now. And so this breastplate, 
Do you have three family members on your top row of three who are unsaved? Three family members, three that you can make targets, lift up before God to open up their hearts, minds, and souls to hear the everlasting truth of the gospel. Now, the next row of three would be three friends that you have. Everybody listening to this has three friends who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, who haven't accepted him as Savior. Find those three friends. Say, God, show me. Not only my three family members. And you may have more, but target three. And three friends. The next row that we want to have is, our, is either co-workers or people we know in the community. Co-workers or people we know in the community. It could be our neighbors also. Okay, so this is the row right here. God, show me three of my neighbors or three of my co-workers in my community where I can labor in prayer before you and bring them up before your throne because we have one who sits at the right hand of the Father. Now that last row of three, because there's 12 all together, that we'll lift up before the Lord every day. The last row is people you don't know, people you may never come in contact with. But the importance is you never know when somebody could be praying for the president or a governor, some movie star, some hip-hop artist or whatever. I'll tell you what, the prayers of the saints coming together as one can fill that bowl and that person could get saved and many can come into the kingdom. So what I want to do and just encourage you now, because of the harbinger, because of God is lifting his hand off America and he's allowing judgments to come, there's a stirring inside of the unsaved people right now. I am seeing it on university campuses and I know that the prayers of the saints, the persistence, the importune prayers, and knowing by faith that we can bring these people in, that the veil could be lifted off their eyes. I know that we can come together, not only as individuals, but as a corporate church, and many are going to come into the kingdom. So what is my challenge to the church as God has released the harbingers, the warnings to mankind? I challenge each church, each ministry, each individual, every pastor, why don't you get a breastplate hanging? on the wall of your church and have your congregants think of those 12 people how powerful a sunday morning service will be during praise and worship when you can focus on that wall with this banner hanging with names that are written on of the unsaved of people in your congregation larger churches you may need two three or four of these hanging but i'll tell you what when the church prays together in one accord with the praise and worship declaration I'll tell you, I'm just going to give you an example. A church of 100 now is literally a church of 1,200. How is that? Because each person in that church comprising that 100 people, they're carrying 12 in there with them. And so what we have here is a massive prayer movement. And I say to you now, there are churches in Michigan right now who are doing this very thing. So pastors, leaders of ministries, individuals, Get your personal breastplates, but let's engage the total body of Christ. Why would not a church want to do this? Why would not a ministry want to do this when our calling is to pray for the lost? And, you know, God has given us a mandate to go out and pray for people, to turn them from darkness, to call them unto repentance, to turn, you know, to turn them away from Satan, the deceiver of our souls. And I'll tell you what, this is what we've been called to do. You know, the greatest advantage an enemy can have over us is to make us believe he doesn't exist. We as believers have an advantage. God has revealed who this enemy is. He's subtle. He's out to seek and to offer our destroy. And we're going to stand before God someday given to give an account of what we did with our time, our talents, and resources. And I want to stand before God and say, God, I lifted up my breastplate. I lifted up my prayer. People praying for them as a priest of God. And I challenge every one of you to take this on. Get a banner. Put it up in your church. And I'll tell you what, we will see Michigan saved. Michigan will be saved. And I am so blessed and honored to be able to even share this with you. And I'll tell you what, when you get somebody saved in your breastplate, cross them off and put another one on. The multiplication process will begin. Thank you for listening to me here of Rick from Transformation Michigan. And I'll tell you what, thank you so much. The harbingers are upon us. Let's bring in the harvest in Jesus' name.